my favorite travel hack. Ah, I have this little hack, I have to say, because this is the thing, right? Since I travel so much and work on the go, at least I try to stay in nice places, right? Even if I know that I'm going to be just three days at a place. And very likely, sometimes I won't stay much at the hotel, right? Because I need to go to a conference. I will need to end up working more there than at the hotel. But when I go back to the hotel and then in the morning, I want to have a nice view. I want to sleep well, comfortable, etc. right? So in order to choose a good place to stay, uh, instead of trying, just trying to go and filter out and, and identify the ones that have the best rating or reviews in TripAdvisor, for example, uh, I validate, I always va double validate uh, how, how it actually feels uh, to, to stay there by going to Instagram. In Instagram, what I do is to look for uh, the, the photos that have been taken at that place, you know, that you can geolocate the photos, right? So I will look the photos that have been taken uh, in that hotel uh, to, to make sure that it, it actually looks inside how it is supposed to look and how it is shown in, in, in websites, in their own websites or official sites, right? To make sure that I will, that I will get very likely what I, what I really expect and I will be comfortable enough there and, and have a good experience there uh, to and, and it's up how I said before, to have a really good balance of, of, to enjoy traveling, to enjoy staying there, not only uh, thinking about the, the, the work, right? And that is how it, it, it keeps me going and, and really keeps the enjoyment of, of traveling so much. When you travel for a vacation, you don't worry about a wrinkled shirt. But when you travel for business, being connected, being presentable, and not having dead batteries are true causes for concern. So get on board for some business travel hacks with your host, Brian Eisenberg. Yes, well, my name is uh, Aleida Solis. I am an international SEO consultant. I have my own SEO consultancy and I, I work remotely and, and probably this is why I also travel a lot, right? Uh, uh, all of my clients, uh, they are distributed, they are all over, mostly across Europe and also in, in, in the US and a bit in Latin America. Uh, also, I collaborate uh, with other team members that are also spread out across uh, Europe, and, uh, and I travel a lot uh, because of conferences. One of the things that I enjoy, I enjoy the most uh, doing is, is speaking at conferences, sharing, networking, this I, how I also network. Uh, so I, I speak a lot at conferences, I go a lot to conferences, and I make the most out of the experience also, especially if it is a destination that I really like to stay a little bit longer, to discover a little bit, so it's a little bit of, of a mix. So it's because, yeah, I, I work remotely, I work on the go, and, um, and, and that's mainly, mainly the reason. About the airport, uh, I am based in Spain, and right now I am living in, in the north, in Santander, right, which is a small city by the sea, uh, quite nice, but yeah, it's not necessarily that well connected internationally, so whatever I need to fly uh, to another European country or to the U.S., or any elsewhere, right? I need to connect always via Madrid, via Barajas Airport, which was my uh, home airport like until a year and a half ago when I was uh, uh, living in Madrid. So at that, I considered that one my actually my home airport because it's the one that connects me to all over the world. And, um, and it's a nice airport too. I really like the lounges, yeah. You also operate a, w a website for people mm -hmm. who like to work remotely like you, who will also do a lot of traveling. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, well, th this is the thing, right? I, I started working remotely back in 2012 or so, when I was still an employee, as an employee of, 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 of uh, uh, an agency that was based in, in, in the US, right? And I was all, the only employee at that point working uh, remotely. Then at some point I, I I started my own business, I became independent, and one of the things that I told myself is that I really wanted, I, I didn't want to start a typical agency or consultancy, I wanted to keep this freedom that I felt to work from whatever I, I liked, and, uh, and, and I, I 
capable of doing that. So a lot of people started to ask me at that point, like, oh, you were an employee before and now you are independent and you, you have been already like remote for a while. Tell us how can I do that? Because they were, they were seeing that I was traveling all the time or working from home or working from the pool or that, that I didn't need to do the crazy commute and going through all of these usual challenges that you have when you actually need to go to a specific place to work and asking me for tips or how they could become and, and, and do that too. So at some point, uh, talking with other SEO friends and colleagues, uh, we understood that there was this need of, of having a place where resources, insights, guides, references were, were sure about this. And this is how we started Remoters. Um, now I have a, a partner that is called Elisa, and she's also an SEO, and she's also remote. And, uh, and what we do with Remoters is that we uh, share from references, guides, uh, we do interviews with people who work remotely too. We have a job board uh, where we share good jobs that uh, are remote based. Uh, and what we have a living section in case you are more of a digital nomad and wants to, to, to stay at places where you can find actually a community and, and network a little bit more. So we, we, we want and our goal is to have uh, sort of like a trip advisor for, for, for remote uh, professionals or, or digital nomads too, so they can find uh, all the resources that are needed in, in order to start their journey to work like this and have this type of lifestyle or to operate correctly because a lot of the challenges come uh, due to the productivity issues or communication issues that are more usual also when, when you are not used to work remotely, it's a little bit challenging at the beginning, so to, to share about all of this in order to make it uh, easy, <laughs> not only for 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 uh, people, for the employees or independent consultants or or, or, or professionals, but also for organizations. Right? Um, I remember when I was sharing the remoters idea right at the beginning, uh, a long time ago, to a group of people who were quite seasoned already, already uh, business owners, many of them, and I remember that uh, unlike. When I was sharing this idea with uh, employees or, or independent people or, or freelancers, the reaction was not of, of oh that that's quite nice. I, I I wish I was remote. No, right? The, the, yeah, like business owners were more like oh, but I don't know if that will work because if it is already challenging for us to keep the communication going uh, while being in a specific place, everybody, right? I, I don't know how I will make that work if. The team is distributed across across the globe, right? So this is why we have remoters because we know it, it requires a little bit of work. There are already tools out there, but they are not as used as they should. Um, and we want to promote uh, this type of lifestyle and also make it as far more common that pe that people can develop professionally um, in their own way, right? That they don't need to be or live in a city that they hate just because the the the, there is a job there uh, that will help them to get where they want professionally, right? That shouldn't be a requirement, I believe. What do you wish you knew when you first started traveling for business that you now know? Oh, my God. I wish I had known um, the Priority Pass uh, card. You know, this card that um, is used to, to be able to access to many, many lunges across many airports are, are around the world. So especially at the beginning, because I wasn't traveling business so much, because I didn't have the, the status yet uh, at, at the airline that, that I, I use the most. So uh, on one hand, you're not traveling comfortable and uh, you need to catch up and uh, again, to, to work a little bit on the go. But you are in a place where there are families or whatever, people talking and uh, there, are not even, there is not, not even good Wi-Fi or connection or anything. So for me is like i know that with my for example with my my um phone plan with my my mobile plan right now and uh, i can connect from whatever i i want uh doing tethering because i also have a really really good plan and it allows me to connect all over europe and also the the the, the us uh without any extra charge and 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 with that and also having uh, um, a way to access good lunges across any airport in, or most of the airports in the world, whether with the priority card um, 
uh, cards or because I'm traveling business, that that's good enough for me to properly work, right? In in a in a in a, an environment that is comfortable for me, that is important, of course, that you feel comfortable, that you can put your headphones to to have a you know a little bit more quiet uh, surroundings, things like that. But definitely having access to a good lunch that will give you Wi-Fi in case in case you don't have even your own data plan with you at that point. That, that, that I think that that is a big win. If they have told me at the beginning about this card or how to right from the start to start working towards achieving a certain status to, uh, with a specific airline um, or, 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 or group of airlines, that would have been amazing right from the start. If we took your uh, your carry on, you know your your, your personal item, and we uh, mm -hmm. we we took everything and inspected it like kind of like the TSA would here. Well, maybe mm -hmm. maybe we won't dump it out on you, but we'll we'll we'll, we'll inspect it. Uh, will we find what kind of any gadgets in there? You know, what are you carrying? Any snacks? What what do you travel with? Well, usually, no. In my in my carry on, actually, I will bring mostly my clothes and and makeup and and. Um, uh, hair straighter <laughs> to, but mostly things like that. But then it's in my backpack because I, I bring my carry on and then a uh, Kanken backpack that is also very good for the back. Uh, that also makes a whole uh, really, really good difference. That and having the MacBook Pro that is also ver very light, the small one. Um, and even sometimes I travel with my backpack only that is even light. It's not that powerful as the Pro, but it's, it's very, very light in case I, I know that I need to walk a lot, a lot with the backpack. So, uh, but for example, in the backpack, what you will always find is that I always bring an extra battery for for my for my uh, mo mobile, my my um, a Mofi battery. In the before when I had the previous iPhone, I had the 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 case battery, but they don't do it anymore for the iPhone 10. So I, I have this extra battery, uh, nonetheless, with me all the time, just just in case, right? Um, I will always bring um, the the AirPods um, to to be able to at any point if I am like even in a train or waiting at the airport, or whatever, uh, to be able to watch Netflix. I always download uh, series or movies in Netflix or or, or Amazon Prime uh, before before going any. Anywhere that has like a non-trivial amount of time where I know that I'll be at the airport or during the flight, right? Uh, so I always bring that with me. And then what else? I have a 260 camera that I supposedly had bought it to always take cool photos from whatever I, I, I and I always bring it with me, honestly. But I sometimes I forget about it and I'm like really bad with, with that. Another thing that I have started to do recently is to, I have bought the, Blinkist um, uh, app um, access, and uh, I also have downloaded many, many uh, summaries uh, of, of, of books, uh, non-fiction books. So it, it, it's one of the goals that I had uh, for this year for myself to learn about a bunch of other things, uh, not only SEO and marketing, but I don't know, from uh, finance, uh, economy, things like that. So I, I I, I, for example, I can read two, three of these summaries of books. Very interesting to, on the, instead of only watching uh, movies or TVs, do so. I try uh, to have uh, all what I need to entertain myself, or actually to work well, even if I am disconnected. To I, I try to, I, and I always think ahead, right? Like, what will I need to download in order to be able to 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 have a productive flight or wait. Uh, if I have them, if I don't have connection, right? And I will try to download as much as possible, and gather all the information that I need to finish a deck or or do an or do an audit and, and gather already the data that I needed to validate in, instead of having online to have it on my computer, things like that, to keep the productivity going. In all your years of travel, now, what is the best lesson that you've learned? <sighs> the best lesson that I have learned. Uh, to never forget my my passport potentially that is like I always bring my passport just in case you know that in uh, around Europe in Europe I can travel with my my uh, identity card but just in case I also have my passport just in case I lose something so I am like very careful with that I I have like a copy of my passport and also my ID 
on my on my email, uh, things like that. I am always very I, I, mindful of, of having all the necessary papers and everything to to travel somewhere. Maybe because you know I am originally from Nicaragua, right? So I am I, when I was still only having my Nicaraguan passport, I was. I needed to be extra careful always to get all the visas. Unfortunately, you require many more visas to the U.S., uh, across many countries to be able to enter. So I have been always very careful uh, regarding that paperwork, et cetera, et cetera. So once that I got the, 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 the Spanish passport, it was a lot of relief, a lot of work out of me. But I am still very extra careful, more than usual, more than I think that I have seen many people going like, oh, I forgot my passport or I forgot my ID or things like that. That will never happen to me. So I'm very extra careful with all this type of paperwork, etc. that I that I need to do. Thank you for listening to Business Travel Hacks with your host, Brian Eisenberg. Catch us on the web at businesstravelhacks.com or at Business Travel Hacks on Facebook and Instagram. What is your favorite travel destination? Uh, my favorite destination definitely is Tokyo, Japan. It's, it's amazing. Oh, my God. It's my favorite city of the world. It's, it's a mix of everything. It's, it's New York to the, it's, it's the evolution of New York, right? And, and then at the same time, it feels so, so, so authentic and, and, and also a little bit in the past because you can walk a little bit around and you feel oh, you will find all this little street with this very authentic, typical Asian uh, Japanese, of course, uh, places where you will have this amazing ramen uh, or, or sushi. So it's, it's, yeah, definitely Tokyo is my number one destination in the world. And I, I could come back every day uh, <laughs> there to, to, to enjoy a bit. Now, I, I mean, I can't imagine how many destinations you've actually been to because, I, I mean, I see a picture of you going all over the world. But is there a place that um, that you're dreaming of going to that you haven't gone to yet? Yes, actually. You know, um, I think that there's actually one place that I really wanted to go. And let's see if I can make it happen still this year. Uh, the Maldives. The, um, but of course, since well, that that destination in particular needs to be 100% holidays focused because of course it's pure beach, pristine beaches, etc. But it's amazing, but yeah, uh, it will be a little bit more difficult to have a conference there. However, I am going to a conference in Bali in October, so I that was another destination that I so needed and wanted wanted to 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 go. But yes, the Maldives is that one destination I think that is has been in my list from. A long time, since a long time ago, and I, I really, really, I am very looking forward to go to. <laughs>